son, Daniel White IV, helped me for many years with my sermons. He learned Greek as a little boy, saying he wanted to preach. He uh, read major theological uh, books. And so he has a grasp of theology and has uh, for many years. And so he helped me tremendously uh, with my sermons down through the years, allowing me to preach uh, nearly every day for years the Holy Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Word of God. Uh, he is on a mission right now. And, uh, and so my baby son has stepped up, and uh, he's already uh, one sermon ahead. And one of the reasons why I have done this with the boys, boys are a little bit uh, harder than the girls as far as uh, getting the word in them and them responding to the word. And uh, my oldest son uh, needed it, and so uh, for them to grapple with the Word of God on a daily basis themselves has been very good for them. And at the same time, they helped me in the ministry. Uh, the truth of the matter is both of my sons can write a sermon faster than I can. A full sermon uh, because they're younger and they know how to do the research on the computer far better than I can. And so it's been a great help. But all of my daughters are able and have helped with my sermons as well. And I thank God for that. Now let's stand for the reading of God's holy word. The lifestyle of the messengers of Christ. Part 13, the Just Jesus Evangelistic Campaign, day 850, since January the 20th, 2017, day 1212, since January the 1st, 2016. And uh, I have taken my longest vacation that I have ever taken and the spirit was willing but the Lord made it clear to me that for me to keep on preaching and get ready for this 100 day plus stretch starting September the 15th uh, he wanted me to do some other things I have been sharing the gospel every day uh, in a different format via podcast but as far as going through the The exertion of preaching a sermon, a full sermon, uh, which all preachers know is like a half hour sermon is like eight hours working on a job uh, down at the dock or whatever else is difficult. And uh, my wife will tell you that she has to peel the clothes off of me after I preach because I'm soaking wet uh, after preaching. And I'm not even moving that much. But anyway, uh, the spirit was willing and is willing, but the flesh is weak. But after being off for a while and not under the stress of preaching every day, uh, I feel like preaching. I'm getting back to that, uh, getting back to that point where I physically am excited uh, and ready to preach. And all 
creatures know what I'm talking about. Matthew chapter 10, verses 16 through 23. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents, and harmless as doves. We have people today in the church and outside of the church who are smart, but they're not wise. And uh, not being wise is a problem for your life. Uh, you can save yourself thousands of hours of time, thousands of days, hundreds of days of time, and money if you had wisdom. And you can accomplish a whole lot more in a shorter amount of time with wisdom. So get wisdom. With all thy getting, get wisdom and understanding. It will help you in your life. And you will do more as a younger person uh, than even the older people. Be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. Pray, say, how, uh, preacher, how do I get wisdom? You pray for wisdom. And that's the only way you can get it. It's, it's, you, you can't get it by reading books. Pray and ask God to give you wisdom, dear friend. And make sure your heart is a heart that wants wisdom and will do right with the wisdom. God is not going to give you wisdom to do wrong and to do harm. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils and they will scourge you in their synagogues. Beware of men, people. Beware of the devil using men and women to uh, get at you and to try to hurt you and harm you and stop you from God's purpose in your life. Be they family members, friends, or foes. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. For when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father, which speaketh in you. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents, and cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Some of you have compromised your Christian life down to the ground. You're doing all kinds of ungodly things on the job, and you cannot figure out why everybody hates you. They hate the Christ in you, and they can smell him. They can sense him in your life. Uh, they know that there's something different about you, no matter how you compromise yourself down to the ground. Going as low as you can go, even lower than some of the wicked sinners on the job to fit in, to fit in, to fit in in college, to fit in in school. The aroma of Christ is in you, and they smell it. They know that there's something different about you, and they still hate you, and you have not figured it out. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. How about that? Are you enduring till the end? Are you slip sliding away, backslidden, quitting on God, throwing in the towel? Want to be liked by the world, liked by even your sisters and brothers in your own family who are going in the wrong direction. You want to fit in. But when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. 
don't walk, get it. For verily, truly, I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. Holy Father God, we are weak and feeble, but you are strong and mighty. Give us, Lord, your strength, your might, your power, your Holy Spirit. We thank you so much for the songs that have been sung this morning that remind us that all power is in your hands. No matter how we may feel or what we may think, you can get it done if you want to get it done what needs to be done. We give you the glory, the praise, and the honor for all that you have done in the past, down through the years. In my case, 40 years. Lord, and you're causing me to endure until the end by your grace, by the power of your Holy Spirit. Thank you for everything, the good and the bad, that some might call bad, but was for my good. And, uh, and caused me to be involved with the furtherance of the gospel. I give you the glory, praise, and honor, and I thank you for your Holy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for your Holy Word. And we individually and collectively, as believers, confess our sins. Some have bad attitudes. Some are not cheerful when they know they ought to be cheerful even in the midst of tribulation and they're not even going through tribulation because they're not a threat uh, to Satan. Some are rebellious, some are stubborn, yet they name the name of Christ. Have mercy and grace upon us all as Christians, as believers, and for Jesus Christ's sake forgive us of our sins as we from our hearts by your grace forgive those who have sinned against us. And Lord, some among us have never been born again. They have never been saved. And they need to examine themselves to see whether or not they're even in the faith. Crush and crucify, Lord, our flesh and the old man within us all. And fill us all with the fullness, the power, the unction, and the anointing, the fruit and the liberty of your Holy Spirit. Break us and make us and mold us to be all that you want us to be by the power of your sweet Holy Spirit. Forgive us of our sins of grieving your Holy Spirit, of quenching your Holy Spirit with bad attitudes, with hatred, with racism, with prejudice, with uh, being judgmental and uh, evil thoughts, imaginations, and lust, and other sins. Lord, uh, forgive us of grieving and quenching your Holy Spirit and fill us with the power and the unction of your Holy Spirit, not only at this moment, but throughout the remainder of this day, which could be our last day, uh, throughout the remainder, Lord, of our lives. Help us to walk in the power of your Holy Spirit, no matter the tribulation, no matter the trouble, uh, no matter the haters and the betrayers, no matter the Judases in our lives, no matter the enemies in our own family, Give us sweet victory, sweet victory over the world, the flesh, and the devil. No matter how long the struggle, no matter how long the battle, help us to pray through. And we pray that in the end, over three million souls would be saved through the preaching of this ministry. Three million Christians would be encouraged and revived again and made part of the 7,000, the faithful remnant that keep on keeping on by your grace and your power. And Lord, we pray that you'd glorify your holy name, lift up your holy son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, demonstrate the power of your Holy Spirit for uh, your word reminds us that it is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, 
K.P. Yohanan said, no one wants to be disliked. No one wants to be disliked, hated, ostracized, or misunderstood, especially by family members, friends, and loved ones. But this is often exactly the price to be paid by anyone seriously wanting to follow Jesus Christ into a life of servanthood, end of quote. And many Christians who have been duped by the devil today by the prosperity gospel, by lying preachers, false prophets who lie to them. Oftentimes, many of them are pastors who want to keep the money coming in, who want to keep the people coming in, and so they lie to them and tell them that everything in your family, everything in your life ought to be hunkadory all the time wonderful and sweet. Here's how to get it that way. And, I, and I'm here to tell you, I don't care uh, what little one, two, three ABC principles they give you. None of that stuff is going to work against the devil. And if you are serious about serving the Lord and being a witness for the Lord and praying to the Lord, you will be a threat to the devil and to his, what he thinks is his kingdom. And he's going to be on you like white on rice and black on me. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. And so, dear friends, don't believe the hype. Don't believe the lies. Because these very same pastors who preach that lie, their families oftentimes are in shambles behind the scenes. We may not hear about it until 18 years later, but that is the case. And then it all blows up. Husband and wife, pastor and wife, have not spoken in years. Pastor and wife haven't had sex together in years. The children hate the parents, the parents hate the children. But on Sunday morning, they show up as the Brady Bunch to keep the money coming in. And they tell you lies and make you think that you go, you're, you're a bad person because you have problems. You have tribulation, you have trouble. It's all a lie. Now, beloved, Last week, we began looking at the persecution, and by the way, I don't care who likes it. Christians need to stop lying and living a lie, starting with the pastors and their wives and their children, who the congregation already know are devils because they act like devils, mean as the devil, the children of the pastor oftentimes is full of hell and the devil and oftentimes the pastor's wife is laid in that death it happens across this nation this is why you are hearing about so many creatures falling and their wives uh, recently uh, just so uh, good-looking family, look like they had it going on, beautiful family, beautiful. All of a sudden, zip, bam, boom, they had built a big old mega church, multi-site campus. They looked the part, young and vibrant and picture-perfect. 
But behind the scenes, behind the scenes, scenes, there was a charade the whole time. And finally, they did it. You know, they did it. They did it like we 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 do it today. All covered up secretly. Nobody can lie and cover up stuff like some Christians can. Nobody, and, 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 and excuse me, and I know some of my black uh, folk will get mad at me, nobody can cover up stuff and lie about stuff and hide stuff for years like religious black folk. Excuse me. I'm sure there, and, and, and there, there are white folks who do the same. In fact, this couple that I'm talking about, they, they are white. Nothing but a charade. And they thought that nobody knew about it. But see, you can't fool, listen to me very carefully. You might be able to fool some people some of the time, but you cannot fool the true people of God. You cannot fool folk up in the church, man. There are people in the church who can see right through you. Okay? They can tell your marriage is a charade. It, it, it is a, it, it's just a lie. They can tell your children got the devil in them. They can tell that on Sunday morning you're doing the Brady Bunch thing. <laughs> you need to stop it. And yes, that's right. Some need to resign if you're not going to stop it. But rather than resign, just stand up in the pulpit and tell the people the truth. And say, we're going to take a sabbatical uh, because the devil is attacked. Uh, our family, my wife and I are not getting along, we haven't spoken in weeks, and uh, uh, the children are uh, acting like devils, and, uh, and we're not setting the right example, pray for us, instead of preaching, just say that, and let somebody in church, a younger preacher and his wife, who they're still fired up for Jesus, let them preach, and then you all go and decide what you're going to do like resign or whatever else you want to do or repent and I know you don't like it but it's true why because why do we know this because the house of cards all over the place are falling flat down on the ground with dust all over the place One of the best ways you can help your people, Pastor, is tell the truth all the time. Not only in your uh, words, but in your life. Stop faking it because they already know that you're faking it. And that's why you end up in the arms of uh, Sister Sylvia. That's why. Because Sister Sylvia already got your number and she she has your wife's number. She can look at y'all know y'all ain't getting along. And, 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 and she's going to post herself at the door. And she goes, Pastor, bending halfway down to the ground, Pastor, oh, that, that, that sermon really blessed me, knowing that your wife has never said those words in her life. And she's going to got to get closer, shake your hand and rub your hand and massage your hand while she's shaking your hand and say, Pastor, I tell you, you really blessed my heart, I tell you. I'll call you after, I'll call you after church. I'll call you today and let you know what other people are saying about your sermon. And she's got you right there. Because you don't, she knows you don't have anything going on with your wife and your wife ain't, she's not doing what she should be doing and, and, and uh, does not appreciate you the way she should. And honey, she got a good man. A man of God. And don't, don't get mad at me. It happens everywhere. Everywhere. And it's happening across this country. So last week, dear friends, we began looking at the persecution that Jesus warned the disciples they would face. We saw how they would be forced to testify in front of 
government officials by people who did not like their preaching of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ their gospel message Jesus told them not to worry about what they would say before these officials because the Holy Spirit would speak through them what God wanted. We now turn, beloved, our attention to verse 21 where Jesus continues to describe the persecution they will face, not only they, but us as well, that we will face. Not only will they be persecuted by strangers, but they will be persecuted by family members. Not only will they have to testify before magistrates, but they will be put to death by those who should be the most, the most supportive of them. Now, you don't have to tell me, and you won't tell me, because you want everybody to think that your family is so wonderful, so sweet, so dandy, and your wife is so this and that, your husband is so this and that. This is the lie Christians have told for years now, particularly in evangelical circles, Bible-believing circles when we know we ought not to lie or live a lie. But we have bought into this, duped by the devil, through the so-called prosperity gospel, where Christians are supposed to have everything so sweet and hunger-dory all the time. There's no warfare. If you mention the devil, oh, don't give the devil too much credit. Ain't nobody giving the devil too much credit. The devil is loose. And he's destroying families. He is destroying churches. He is destroying the lives of young women and young men left and right. Even today, by the time I finish this sermon, another young lady who used to be in church is raped and can't even find her. Right now, there's a mother and a father in the state of Texas, right here in the Dallas area. Not only do they believe the child is dead, but they can't find the child. Now, you know, that's, that's death times two. Young lady. Just the other day, now this is, this is unheard of. It is unheard of a southern mother, be she black or white, killing her grown children. One had already graduated from college and living on his own, had a great job. The other one, full scholarship, had a prestigious college and living her life and doing her dream. And especially, excuse me, pardon me, especially a black mother. Once a black mother gets the children to that point, she understands that she's free. She's done her job. In the words of our young people, she's done the doggone thing. Rarely. In fact, I've never heard of a black mother killing her grown children. Or killing her, uh, her young children. And then killed herself. I tell you, beloved, there's a devil loose. And one of the reasons why we bring this up and we report stuff like that because we have our little sweet evangelical Christian people uh, holed up in their little cul-de-sacs with their little Starbucks coffee uh, living in their own little world. They don't get out to witness to anybody. They don't talk to sinners. They don't know what the world is in the world is going on with other people. And that's why I bring it up because there's a devil loose right down the street from you. This was a prominent family. This, this family comes from a prominent family. The ex-husband and father, a doctor, well-known, well-connected, black in Atlanta, 
I'm here to tell you there's a devil using a loose and you don't you think that the devil won't get you? Not only that, these people were rich, well to do. They had it all. They just got back from Italy. Just got back from Miami on a trip. These are families who have credit cards and money in the bank. These are people who when they pull out their car, they're not worried. They got they have a real credit card, not just a bank card, and plus they got cash to back it up. And here you barely got a bank card. Barely got eleven dollars in your bank account. And you you are going through this and that and you and you think the devil won't attack you? And finish you off. To this day, nobody knows what happened. I know what happened. There's a devil loose. The devil had been working on her for months. You say, well, they church goes. Apparently, they're going to be funeralized at a church. Evidently, that's their home church. Be that as it may, beloved, by way of introduction to this passage uh, today, Dr. John Gill wrote in his exposition on the Holy Bible regarding this passage, Christ having fortified the minds of his disciples by the foregoing promises of divine influence and assistance proceeds to open more largely and particularly the sorrows I said the sorrows or he said the sorrows the troubles and afflictions they must expect would attend the faithful ministration of his gospel uh, Dr. Gill he, he very high-sounding theologian. He, he uses some words that can blow your mind, but he, get, he, he makes a good point. He makes good points. As that the true followers of Christ would not only be persecuted and betrayed and delivered up into the hands of the civil magistrate by persons that were strangers to them, but even by their nearest, dearest relations, brethren, whom the nearness of blood should oblige to the tenderest regard to each other, to the securing of property and preserving of life. These should deliver up those that were so nearly related to them in the bonds, bonds of consanguinity. You say, what is that? It means family relations. I, I told you Dr. Gill likes to use these words. Consanguinity into the hands of persecuting men in power in order to be put to death than which scarce anything can be more barbarous and unnatural that is to betray your own family members I said betray your own family members don't look shocked at me the truth of the matter is if you are a threat to the devil you must understand you're going to have a Judas like Jesus did. You're going to have a devil. Always remember now, Judas was filled with the devil. Jesus said himself that Judas had a devil. God had a Judas in Satan himself. He betrayed God. Listen to me. If you are a threat to Satan's kingdom, 
If you are a threat to what Satan is trying to do, you mark my words. The devil is going to make sure you have a Judas or two in your family, in your church, in your ministry that will betray you. And there is nothing like betrayal. Nothing, and the devil knows it, nothing more discombobulating, nothing more painful than the betrayal of somebody who is supposed to be close to you and supportive of you like your own family. But don't, don't be shocked. Jesus warned us that, that our greatest enemies will be they of our own household. But, oh, we don't want to hear that today in our sweet little cul-de-sac evangelical community. And we hide it. We hide the devil in our family. We hide the devil in the church. We try to cover it up because, you know, we're, 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 the, we're part of the, God, the prosperity gospel generation. We are not to have those problems. We don't want to give uh, the devil too much credit. You keep, listen to me, you can keep on talking stupid like that all you want to. That's what the devil wants you to say. We don't want to give the devil too much credit. Well, the devil is going to keep on stepping and stomping on you while you're talking crazy like that. Because all throughout the Bible, God warns us that there is a devil loose. And he's seeking to destroy you. He's seeking to devour you, your family, and your church. And that is what is happening across this country and around the globe. And one of the reasons why is because God's people are not praying as they should and as they used to. So my beloved, this is one of those hard sayings of Jesus Christ that many people do not want to face up to. Black and white on both sides. Red and yellow. Everybody wants to hear a lie. People don't want to hear sound doctrine. You can keep on riding around and walking around with your facade in Christian life. But see, you don't have to tell me. I know what's going on. And I know what's going on if you are a threat to the devil. You're catching hell like all other Bible-believing Christians. And in this day and time, it is it, it can be unrelenting attacks against you by Satan and his demons. Unrelenting. Always something. I talked with a pastor the other day, a man of God who's planted several churches, a soul winner from his heart. He's trying to take care of his wife, and they're giving him a hard time down at the uh, home where she is. They gave him a hard time so bad the other day that uh, uh, he had to tell some folks off. It just so happened I called him that morning. I didn't know what was going on, and I just happened. I normally don't even ask him. Just I ask him how his wife is doing. I normally ask him how he's doing. He's so strong. I asked him how he was doing, and then he began to tell me how the devil attacked him. And how that he had to, got into a, a confrontation with the people who were supposed to be taking care of his wife. The people lying on him. And that kind of thing happens every day, all day, to Bible-believing Christians who are a threat to the devil. You say, well, how, how, are you, how are they a threat? Because they won't quit praying. They won't quit witnessing. They won't quit being faithful to God and to Jesus and living a godly lifestyle. They won't quit applying the Word of God to their family. They just won't quit. And the devil, what the devil is doing is trying to make you quit. And so, beloved, it is inconceivable to many that the familial bonds should be broken over this matter. But such is the opposition of those sinful men to the gospel. You must understand the devil hates Jesus 
The devil hates the gospel and you represent him. You are a minister of the gospel whether you're called to preach or not. Everybody is called to share the gospel. In the book of Romans, Paul talked about how that the carnal mind or the unsaved mind is enmity against God. The spirit of the flesh that still dwells within unbelieving family members, friends, is naturally, naturally, without even trying, at odds with the Holy Spirit of God that dwells within their Christian relatives. And the same spirit that brought the disciples before judges would also divide families. It happened back then. It has happened throughout Christian history, church history, and it's happening today like never before. One way to view this persecution from family members and friends. My son, Daniel Ziegler, tells me is as a Hatfield-McCoy style feud between two families who cannot be or choose not to be reconciled. And cannot be reconciled. When we accept Christ as Savior, we become children of God. However, if someone is not saved, their father is the devil. Those who are saved, God is their father. <laughs> Listen to me very carefully, dear friend. That's what's going on in your family. Okay? That's why you and your wife are at odds. Your wife may be lost and on her way to hell. Or the husband may be lost and on his way to hell. How can two walk together unless they agree, man? There's something wrong. Stop lying to yourself. Stop buying all of those books at the Christian bookstore or from Amazon on 10 steps on how to have a happy family. And, and you sitting there reading that to your devilish wife or to your devilish husband and trying to get them to read it, placing the book. You know how some of your family members are. You don't ask anything. You don't say anything. You hint at stuff. You'll buy a book and set it on the pillow. You'll set it on your pillow. So when they, when they hit the roof, why are you trying to plant stuff for me to read around the house? I'm not a devil. Well, you know they're a devil if they're mad because you got a book on the bed. No, I, I didn't do it. I said on my pillow. That's my book. No, you liar. You want me to pick up the book and read that book? I know what you're doing. You, you left 25 books in the bathroom for me to read. You know, these people who like to hint at stuff, they don't say, they don't say anything. They don't confront anybody. They just hint at stuff and look, leave little pamphlets around and go up. All this kind of stuff. Videos and so forth. CDs. But that's what's happening in your family, dear friend. You need to accept it. Stop lying about it. Stop buying these books. Stop buying these CDs. Uh, spend all your money on stuff uh, and then playing it loud in the car. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, that's you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, that's you. That ain't gonna get it. You're dealing with the devil. Reading a book to, the, to a devil is not gonna cast out a devil. There's only one somebody who can deal with the devil in your family member that is Jesus all you can do is pray and make sure you live out your life as a Christian and don't turn into a devil yourself excuse me My, your sweet little children they were sweet and little when they were little and sweet they have grown into monsters and the devil and devils they are stealing from you Stealing from their sisters and brothers, intimidating their family members. They're acting like devil because they probably have never been born again, and you're trying to find books from Dr. Dobson on how to raise a devil, and there's no such book. You can you can read a book to the devil and plant books for the devil all you want. They're not going to read it, and they're going to look at you with their devilish eyes when you're trying to read it to them.
You got a devil in your family. That's why y'all don't get along. There are some families where there's a matter of maturity. Some have not grown to a certain point. Uh, but if something's been going on for 10, 15 years, they don't want to pray with you. They don't want to read the Bible. They hate church. They hate the Word of God. They hate anything you do for God. They look at you like they want to kill you. They got hatred in their eyes and in their spirit. There's something wrong. That person in your family has never been born again, and you need to stop lying about it and do what Jesus did when there was a Judas in his camp. This Judas has a devil. You need to, you got to confront it, man. You got to deal with it. Stop lying about it, trying to impress people. Everybody in your church knows that as soon as that child gets out from under you, they're going to leave God, they're going to leave Jesus, they're going to leave the church. Because they already have done so in, with, their, with their children. Tell the truth and shame the devil. Tell the truth and shame the devil. Tell the truth about your family and shame the devil. About your church and shame the devil. Stop being a hypocrite, a phony, and a fake. And we thank God for the 1%, 2% of families who got it going on for reasons that we uh, may not be able to put our finger on. But one of the reasons is if you, if both sides of the family have a godly heritage going back centuries, then it may be that that family is they truly love each other, and it's a wonderful situation. The parents love the children, the children love the parents. We thank God for the one or two percent of the Christian families who got it going on like that. Be happy for them, but tell the truth about your family. First generation saved. First generation born again. First generation saved out of religion, which is uh, being saved out of religion is 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 is. is worse than being saved out of uh, a irreligious background because you got so many devils to deal with so much mess to deal with so many lies to deal with and so my beloved in closing the spiritual families of God and uh, the families of Satan are diametrically opposed to each other on this earth. The devil will not tolerate us spreading the gospel in a world that he is the prince of. He's not going to let you do that. Okay? It, if the Bible is true about what the devil is doing, what he's about, the devil is not going to let you do that and get away with it. So any person, any family, any church that's all about spreading the gospel and praying to speed the gospel along is going to be persecuted. It's going to be attacked. And if the devil can't get you, through strangers, you rest assured, as sure as I'm black and my last name is white, you can bank on this. The devil is going to attack you and deal with you. You are a threat to him. He will, he, and he will use your own wife, he will use your own husband, he will use your mother, he'll use your father. He will use your siblings to stop you from praying and spreading the gospel. That is a fact. Now, there's a way that you can stop that. Stop being a threat. Just go on and sit down somewhere. Stop praying all the time. Because you've already learned that the more you pray, the more hell you catch in the beginning. Oh, yes, things will get better. But you're going to catch some hell if you're going to start praying like you, you should be praying. Excuse me. All prayer warriors know this. It doesn't always get better because you pray a lot. It's 
Our family prays every hour on the hour. My baby daughter sends out texts to everybody in the family on the hour. She's been faithful at it. There are four verses that we send out every hour, and one every hour. Jesus Christ gave a parable to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Jesus Christ said, Ask, and ye shall receive. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. The Bible says, Pray without ceasing. The Bible says, Pray always. The devil does not like that. You would think that, Oh, our lives are just so wonderful and so glorious, and we always just, uh, uh, everything's going so wonderful. No, no, man. It doesn't work that way. There's a battle going on, and, and the devil does not want us praying every hour. Because there's power in prayer. The devil hates it. People have dark feelings when that's going on. The battle is hard. The devil is always doing something to try to trip us up. I wish I can tell you that everything is hunkadory and sweet all the time because we pray without ceasing. But it's not. How can warfare be sweet and hunkadory all the time? It, it is not that way, dear friend. Stop lying and stop living a lie. We pass out tracts every day. We witness to people every day. Hundreds, thousands of folks. Every day, online and around the world, by the grace of God, and the devil wants it stopped. You mock my words. He wants it stopped. And he's putting out all the stops to try to get that to, to stop. We as Christians must come to terms with the fact that we are inherently opposed to the world because of our stance with Jesus on the Word of God. When we faithfully serve God and spread His message of the Gospel and biblical truth that is the whole counsel of God, contrary to the happy prosperity gospel people, our wonderful family relationships can, will, and often do become a major source of pain and betrayal. Nobody, the devil knows this, nobody can hurt you like your own friends and family, the Judases around you. In fact, a stranger can't even be a Judas. They really can't betray you because they don't even know you. They're not close enough to betray you. Those who have been in your church with you for 20 years, those are the ones that the devil will use. Your wife, your husband, your children who were once on fire with you and serving God with you, the devil can turn them and make them be a Judas. This opposition extends even to family members who have not accepted Christ as their Savior. They are truly false brethren. However, we should continue to love them and treat them with Christ-like love. Remember that the devil is using them to attack us because of our witness for Christ. Daniel S. Warner said, O ye pilgrims, sing an exhortation. Let his music sound within your heart. Life or death or storm of persecution, never, never from the Lord depart. If we truly love the dear Redeemer, 
meekly suffer with him loss and shame. If we say that he abided in us as he walked, so we should walk the same. Oh, by all the sacred bliss of heaven, and by all the love we owe to God, keep the solemn charge the Lord has given. Watch and pray and live beneath the blood. Let's all stand for prayer. Holy Father God in heaven, Lord, so many people get discouraged because they can't see you. They forget that you're there. They forget your holy word. And some get discouraged, some get defeated at the attacks of Satan. And I pray for them today that you, you would comfort their hearts. Remind them that you have already warned us of all of this. And now that it is happening, we need to go back to your word and remember what you said. You warned us about it so that we would not be shocked when family members betray us and family members don't want to talk to us and communicate with us because of our faith in Christ and because of our stance on your holy word and the whole counsel of God. And so, Lord, I pray that you would rejuvenate those who are truly born again, but they are discouraged. They are defeated because they have been attacked by Satan. And they don't know what hit them. Now they know. Help them to get back up because uh, we know that you can help them to get back up. For just man falls seven times but rises up again. And so Lord, help all of your saved ones to rise back up again. And get back on the firing line. Now that they have been reminded that the Christian life is not a bed of roses. Never was meant to be. Uh, you told us that it would not be. In fact, you told us that in this life we shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Lord, we thank you for your holy word that reminds us of what is really going on. And Lord, I pray that you will encourage your Christian servants to rise up as soldiers again and endure hardness and uh, get back to praying and reading your holy word and witnessing to others no matter what happens, no matter who turns against them and help them to endure until the end by your grace, by your might, by the power of your Holy Spirit. For your glory, praise, and honor for the lifting up of none other than Jesus Christ, your Holy Son. For it is in his name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. My dear beloved friends, those of you who are participating and listening around the world, and you heard the message, you got a little bit of it, you understood a little bit of it, but you have never trusted Christ as Savior. You have never been born again. Allow me to show you how you can put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior for salvation from the power of sin and the punishment of sin in hell. First, dear friend, accept the fact that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's law. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Second, accept the fact that there is a penalty, there is a punishment for sin. The Holy Bible states in Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. We die because of sin. Our bodies go to the grave 
our soul goes to hell if we have never trusted Christ as Savior. It is my job to warn you of that and to tell you that. I know that you don't like it. I know that you don't want to hear that. But hell awaits you if you don't trust Christ as Savior in this life. And Jesus Christ, by the way, in case you don't know, Jesus Christ preached more on hell than anybody in the Holy Bible. Jesus Christ preached more on hell than he did about heaven. Jesus Christ believes that there is a hell. For he created it for the devil and his angels, not for you. However, if you act like the devil and look like the devil, and live like the devil, and you don't trust Christ as Savior in this life, you will go to hell with the devil. It is as simple as that. You say, preacher, you ought to not, you ought not to try to scare me. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just telling you the facts based upon the Word of God. Jesus Christ said in Matthew 10, 28, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Hell is a very real place, and people are going to hell every day. If you are living in the blood is running warm in your veins and you have air in your lungs God has given you an opportunity to get saved from hell today and be saved and get saved to heaven and from reading the news you know that you can die from watching the news you know that you can die at any moment beautiful couple just got married, pulled out into the highway, and a truck wiped them out, and they're dead today. This happened two days ago. They're either in heaven or hell right now. You see, preacher, you ought not to say that. No, that's a fact. Okay? Two beautiful children, just starting out in their lives, brother and sister, one a college graduate, the other getting ready to graduate from college, full ride scholarship, smart, happy children who were kind to others, noted by others. That's what others said about them. Are in heaven or hell today because their mother killed them and killed herself. You say, preacher, you ought not to bring that up. Preach, you ought not to say that. No, that's a fact. There's a devil loose. And he's destroying lives. And the devil is trying to kill you and destroy you before you get saved. As the devil tried to kill me before I got saved. Many years ago. I came this close to going to hell when I was 17, 18, and 19 years old. I should have gone to hell because of the evil I was doing. But God allowed me to live, to hear the gospel, way down in Mississippi for the first time, even though I was raised in a church. My dad was a preacher, my mother was a preacher. Never heard the gospel. Religious but lost. And you might be like that today. Religious but on your way to hell. Yes, dear friend, hell is a real place, and hell is bad news, but I have some good news for you. You don't have to go to hell when you die. Now, you have car insurance, you have health insurance, you have even life insurance. Now you need eternal life insurance. And I'm here to give it to you, already signed by the blood of Jesus. That's the ink, if you will. And all you have to do is believe on Christ. For Jesus Christ said himself in St. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. He was talking about himself. That whosoever, that word whosoever means anybody at any time, 
Doesn't matter what you have done. Believe it in Him. Yes, just that simple. Just believe in Christ. Just believe in Jesus Christ. That He suffered, bled, and died on the cross for your sins. Whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish. That is, perish in hell, but have everlasting life in heaven with God. Just believe in your heart, dear friend, on the Lord Jesus Christ, that he suffered, bled, and died on the cross for your sins, was buried, and rose from the dead by the power of God for you, so that you can live forever with him. Pray and ask him to come into your heart to save your soul today, and he will. For the Holy Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 13, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou, you, shalt be saved. You shall be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, dear friend, and thou, you, shall be saved. If you're ready to be saved today, let me remind you now, we're not talking about church membership. You don't have to join a church to be saved. You don't have to speak in some unknown tongue to be saved. You don't have to shout and run around the church to be saved. You don't have to give any money to the preacher to be saved. Uh, you don't have to give any money to the church to be saved. You don't have to try to clean your life up before you come. To Jesus to be saved come to Jesus first let him clean you up oftentimes there's nothing but an excuse you cannot clean yourself up clean enough to be saved so just believe on Christ today believe that he suffered bled and died on the cross for your sins was buried and rose again on the third day pray and ask him to save you and I'll be glad to lead you in that prayer call to be sinners prayer Repeat after me, phrase by phrase, and mean it from your heart. Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner, and that I have done evil in your sight. I have broken your Ten Commandments, for I have lied before many times. I have stolen things before. I have disrespected and dishonored my parents. I have taken your holy name in vain. I have coveted after and lusted after uh, people and things. For Jesus Christ's sake, have mercy and grace upon me and Forgive me of all of my sins. Because I know I deserve to go to hell. And Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul. As I now believe in you with all of my heart. I believe that you suffered and bled and died on the cross for my sins. I was buried and rose again on the third day by the power of God. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart. As I receive your free gift of salvation that I do not deserve. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul and change my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit today and help me to truly repent of my sins past and from all of my evil ways and to follow you in the new life. In Jesus Christ's name I pray and for his sake. Amen. Dear friend of mine, if you believed in your heart on the Lord Jesus Christ, that he suffered, bled, and died on the cross 
for your sins and was buried and rose on the third day by the power of God. Allow me to say congratulations on doing the most important thing in life, and that is simply believing on the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, accepting the free gift of salvation through Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to gospellightsociety.com and read my pamphlet titled, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Jesus Christ said in St. John 10, 9, I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find the pasture. And dear friend, if you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, please email me at dw3 at gospelinesociety.com and let us know. We have some free material that we want to send you. If you have a prayer request, please email that to us as well, and we will pray for you until you tell us to stop. Until next time, my beloved, God loves you. Jesus Christ died for you. By God's grace, we love you too. And may God bless you real good is my prayer. Let's all stand for our closing prayer. Holy Father God in heaven, we pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, we praise you and we thank you for what you have done, for what you're doing, and for what you will do. And Holy Father God, we thank you for your holy gospel. We thank you for your holy word. You have truly provided everything we need to make it in this incursed world as believers. Thank you for reminding us today that the Christian life is no bed of roses, uh, but it is uh, the most beautiful life to live because it glorifies your holy name and lifts up your holy son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and we get to follow him. And so Lord, we pray now that uh, as your word is carried all around the world, we know that it will never come back void or empty. And we still pray for the three million come to know your Savior if that has not been done yet. Three million Christians to be revived. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. And God bless you, dear friend. Until next time.